Personal notice dangers my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Sweet are the uses of publicity, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, Believe me, trouble I've got like the hives. Danger I've got like dandruff. But who wants to scratch either one? Why should I ruin my expectancy when there's a man like your caliber advertises he should unwrap people's loads from their backs? No answer. It's for you. You've got it. A job, it's yours. Now listen, so much for politeness. You're going to keep me from an early death. You're going to throw out of work my tombstone maker. And how? By only making yourself pleasant while I throw a party. The place... East Bay, uptown. Meet you at the side entrance at 8 o'clock. The name, Jacob S. Flannery. Jake to you. That's me. The job? Believe me, Mr. Valentine, it's a job, all right. You're going to be a bodyguard. A bodyguard to a man who doesn't exist. Only got ten minutes, Valentine. Guess we'll be upstairs in ten minutes. A bartender, Pete, the usual, and make it fast. Yes, sir, Mr. Flannery. Coming up. Is there anybody around here you don't know? Anywhere, Miss Brooks. Anywhere, and I wish it weren't so. Ah, ten minutes rest. The first all day. Ten beautiful... You know, friend, you're quite a character. Mr. Valentine, you surprised me, too. No, I said that. You'll have to excuse the letter. But I figured private eye, tough Joe, make him like it. Get in tune with his sympathy. Get him here. If it sounded like no grammar, excuse it. There you are, Mr. Flannery. Oh, thank you, sir. The usual water? Ah, for my pills. Dietician says they're no good. Stomach specialist does. Analyst doesn't care, so I take the advice of myself. <laughs> Valentine, I get myself into a person's personality, see? I'm fluid, flexible, in harmony with the situation. Suppose you just tell us what your business is and what our job is tonight and let it go at that. But that's what I'm doing. It's me, my talent, my career. And it's all teetering in the balance. Tonight is the night. Mr. Flannery... I I... build romance, Miss Brooks. I give glamour where there was only gallstones. Pearls out of paste. Oh, here's my card. Personality builder? Publicity, is that it? Is that what you are, publicity agent? Valentine, please. There's no person alive who can put his own best foot forward, so I do it for him. I touch up his public picture. I stick him in the public eye. Sure, publicity, press relations, whatever you like. But in two years, I've built up a suite of ten offices. You'd be surprised at some of the clients I... Skip it, please. Caleb Romano. Have you ever heard of that name? Caleb... Of course. He's that Czechoslovakian or Romanian. I'll say I have, and he's not in your league, Buster. The epitome of romance. He was my first client, Valentine. Okay, sorry. But uh, he's a big-shot foreign businessman, isn't he? Always see his name going to some glamour spot over there in Europe? Being chased by some rich widow? A bachelor, the charmer, the dilettante, the dream of what every dull man of 40 would like to be. My dream. Mine, you understand? Huh? Caleb Romano does not exist. I made him up. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. I've read about Yeah, but you've never actually seen a picture of him, have you? Well, maybe not, but Caleb Romano is... Quiet. I'm trusting you. What I've told you could kill me in this town, ruin me. Newspapers, magazine editors. I've built my business on Caleb Romano. The other clients I've got, they're honest men. I'm an honest man. Oh, yeah, sure. Honest like the day is short, pulling a fraud like this. Listen, two years ago, I wasn't even eating regular. I had to do something. So I dreamed up Romano. It's easy to get publicity for somebody who doesn't exist, particularly when you keep them in Europe. You're not bowed down. You don't have to tell the truth about them. Well, anyway, it worked. When other people heard Romano was a client of mine, in came business. The tailored suits, I'm in. Well, then what are you worried about? Being out, being exposed. I made the mistake of having him come to the U.S. incognito. Reporters are beginning to get puzzled. They sniff around. 
He's been an albatross around my neck. Frankenstein built a monster, and now Frankenstein's monsters... Mm, haunts me. I try to forget them, drop it. But they won't let me. It's every day. Where's Romano? Press agents grab me and say... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Calm down, will you? This party tonight upstairs, and this bodyguard to nobody stuff, and your letter... I said tonight's the night. Caleb Romano is going back to Europe to retire forever. Tonight, we lay the ghost. What? It's a farewell party. The whole press in town is invited. Columnists, the works. I say I've got a surprise for them. A chance to say goodbye to the man they've been itching to meet. Only, of course, he'll be regrettably detained and forced to dash straight for the boat instead. So they don't know it, but they'll never meet him in the first place. You get it? (laughs) Genius. Sheer genius. Desperation, that's all. Be sarcastic, but help me. Please help me. Stand by if I need you in case any of that bloodthirsty mob up there won't swallow the sweet talk and demand they got to see him. Mr. Valentine, believe me, not even I have got this far before. Takes help to give a party for nobody. It also takes guests to give a party for nobody. Don't look now, Mr. Flannery, but I don't see anybody but the waiter. The gentleman of the press left, Mr. Flannery, just a moment ago. Apparently, they received a phone call. I don't know what this party of yours Stop was to be, but... waving your arms. What phone uh, call? Yes, sir, of course, sir, but apparently they had an opportunity to meet someone they wished to meet. I, I can't say as I blame them. I've been fascinated by the stories about him myself. Hey, what is all this? Uh, yes, sir, I believe they all went somewhere together. Someone had arranged a personal interview with that foreigner, Caleb Romano. Imagine, they're going to meet him in person. But, sir, I tell you, you can't go aboard. Look, I know the president of the line, the chairman of the board, and me are just like that. Don't argue with the stockholders. Come on, Valentine. All right, all right, Ballyhoo. We're aboard now, so slow down. I got tickets for him for stateroom 1A. Oh, when you perpetrate a fraud, you certainly do it up fancy. Well, I had to. Had to carry out the full pretense. It's not easy to get rid of a man who doesn't exist. Climb out of that squirrel cage and say it straight, will you? The reporters didn't know what kind of a party you had planned back there. Somebody else phones and says, Caleb Romano can be seen in person someplace else. Well, what makes you think we'll find Claude? He's the only one it could be, Claude. Claude? The steward. Valentine, I had to take him into my confidence, too. I paid a steward a thousand dollars to maintain the pretense until the ship was at sea. We reserved an empty stateroom, bought tickets. Some editor was bound to check out when I gave out the story that Romano had left. You so think I thought... the steward was the one who telephoned? But why would he say they could come down here and see Romano in person? Oh, when... just to get in the act to grab up the spotlight publicity. What else does anybody do anything for? Takes my cash, then gets the credit for exposing me. Come on, come on, I'll shove that laugh through it right through the other side of his face. He'll never be able to bite another hand that feeds him. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Stop, would you? Brooksy, find me the purser of this ship. Huh? Buster, you're just going to take some more pills. Valentine. I'll take care of your double-crosser for you and the newspaper men. So long, Ulster. I'm going after this publicity myself. Young man, are you going to be on this ship? Oh, delightful. I I was only just saying to the chambermaid, I said, how dreary the ocean must be without... I'm sorry, lady. Excuse me. I'm looking for... Oh, but that's the end of the corridor. There are no more rooms. Uh, The lady is quite correct, sir. Perhaps you are lost. There is only one A. Well, that's what I'm looking for, one A. Hey, you're Claude, aren't you? Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, Claude? Oh, well, perhaps you could help me, steward. Oh, lady, please. Uh, I only wanted a cup of bouillon. Excuse me. In just a moment, madam. Uh, no one is to be admitted to cabin 1A, so the gentleman doesn't wish to be disturbed. Buster, where are the reporters? I beg your pardon, sir? Look, I work for the same guy you do, Flannery. Did you call reporters? Really, sir, I don't follow you. I haven't seen a single gentleman of the press aboard this ship. Oh, you haven't, huh? Oh, no, sir. Everything's gone beautifully, just beautifully. If you're on the inn, as we say, you may tell Mr. Flannery we've done a masterful job of his little deception. You have? Oh, yes, sir. See, even dummy suitcases outside the empty cabin. And I have the only key. You may tell him no one has come near here. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, the lady's bouillon. Yeah, yeah, sure, go on. Uh, there's a companion way up there for you to get back up to the deck, sir. Yeah, Cabin 1A, huh? Masterful deception. 
George, the ship has sailed. I'm trying to tell you, the ship has sailed. I can hear you, I can hear you. Hey, where are we? On the ship. We left the dock half an hour ago. Oh, that does it. Of all the crazy stuff. I found you just wandering around with a blank look on your face. Hey, where's Flannery? I suppose he got off all right. Open your eyes, detective. I'm right here. Huh? Don't make like you have the only headache. Have a pill. A bartender. Oh, Buster, wait till I get... the ship stops pretty quick at the Outer Harbor Light Station. We can get off when they drop off the pilot, Just but... a second, Angel. Now, listen, Buster, you're a fraud. Let go of There's me. There's no Caleb Romano, you say. Come help me, you say. Valentine. George, I believe you. There's a million reporters running around loose, only they keep disappearing. No, 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 stop it. What's come over you? Buster, I'm going to bang down the door to that cabin 1A, and if I have to, friend, I'm going to use your head. See? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, it's empty, all right, just like you said. Like the steward said. Mr. Valentine. All right, all right, so I'm wrong. Just because somebody saps me, I act like one. But Flannery somehow on this hot air excursion... Hey. Hey, the boat's stopping. George, that's what we were just trying to tell you. Huh? Oh, yeah, the light station. We get off. No, George, the reporters. That's why we're stopping. The what? There weren't any, are there? The little genius's hoax is still nice and undetected, isn't it? At the light station, the purser got them there. What? When you sent me to find him, remember? The purser said he was the one who telephoned that hotel. He's having the ship stop half an hour at the light station for them to come aboard. The purser? Why? Oh, you innocent babe. Why, he says. They saw Romano's name on the passenger list. That's why... Now the steamship company wants to get into the act. Show up their big passenger, Romano. It's for... Pu- oh, no. No, I can't say. It's for publicity, George. They want some publicity, too. Oh, brother, brother. Now I've heard everything. All right, Brooksy, this is where we came from. Hey, wait a minute. Valentine, wait. You wait. built yourself this headache, Buster. Oh, don't worry. Just show the boys from the press the albatross around your neck. You explain to them why this cabin's empty. But me, I'm wait through with them. Where do you think you're going? Lieutenant Riley. That's right. Nobody's coming aboard this ship but me, Valentine. Now, what in the name of... A fisherman complained somebody threw a body in his net. What? You heard me. Right in the harbor here, a body was thrown off this ship. A man, a big shot. That guy you read so much publicity about. Caleb Romano. The man who doesn't exist. Uh, Hey, what's the matter with that bird there behind you? George, I think Mr. Flannery fainted. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Every time you have to use the choke to get your car started, don't forget it results in extra engine wear as well as a delay in time. And what makes an engine hard to start anyway? Often, it's the fault of gummy gasoline. Gummy gasoline? Yes, indeed. It's caused by the impurities that exist in most raw gasoline. But Chevron Supreme is the gasoline that is super refined to prevent engine sticking gum to keep spark plugs, rings, and carburetor free of this contaminant. That's why Chevron Supreme gives you that new car feeling. Not only faster starting, but quicker pickup in traffic and ping-free power on the steepest hills. Just try super-refined Chevron Supreme. It's the gasoline that gives you full mileage in the kind of driving you do. Buy Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Caleb Romano was a romantic, mysterious figure, a bachelor sought after by many women, friend of the great, maker of tabloid headlines, the dream of what every middle-aged man would like to be. 
But, according to Jake Flannery, Caleb Romano was only a dream himself. A nightmare that Flannery created in order to build up his own publicity business. A fraudulent ghost returned to haunt Flannery forever. Because now it's no longer a ghost. It's a body. The body of Caleb Romano. Well, if your name is George Valentine, that's what you want to see. In the police launch, tied alongside the big ship several hundred yards off the outer harbor light station... Now, you believe me, Valentine. This is the main feature. Bullet, huh? Yeah, that's right. He was shot twice. 38 revolver. See what I mean? He was murdered and then thrown overboard. Murdered, I said. And all for publicity. What's that? Oh, never mind. Refrain of a song. Riley, it must have happened just after I got cracked over the head. There's a big window in cabin 1A. Somebody must have heard the ship was going to stop again and have reporters running all over the place. So they got scared and shoved the body through it. Hey, wait a minute, Riley. Hold it. Huh? Mr. Valentine. Uh, Mr. Va... Oh. Oh, there you are. Hi, blood pressure. Where's your respect for the living? Is that any way to talk? Just wondered if you got things straight with the inspector. Flannery, I'm a lieutenant this season. And yes, I've heard that sluiced up story of yours. And furthermore, I'm convinced you're the only fake around here, see? You see this pretty gold cigarette case? Huh? Oh, initialed, huh? Yeah. Very classy. C.R. Or would you rather paw around in a wallet? Same initial, C.R. Hey, what else was on the body, Riley? Eh, doesn't mean anything. Might be Chauncey Rose or Charlie Rappaport or even Captain Riley for all you can... And he was wearing a nice new wristwatch. Caleb Romano. But, but it can't... You engineered all of this. Cooked up the stories for Valentine here. It doesn't exist, I tell you. I I don't know why that stuff's on him. I well, who collects body. now that Romano's dead? That's all I want to know. No, 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 no. Listen to me. It's not true. And None don't give me any more that don't exist stuff. I know, see? I read an article once about Romano in a magazine myself. I wrote that article myself. I made it up. And, friend, I'm going to write you a nice long ticket. Hey, for... cut it out. Cut it out, both of you. Well... Huh? Riley, I got some more initials. Huh? Yeah. Mr. Valentine, please tell Stop me. Stop babbling, would you? Take a look here. J.W., 1929. Mamie H., 1931. Hey. Yeah, some marks under his shirt. Here. The names and dates all seem to end around 32. Tattoo. That's right, Buster. Now, look here. I'll always love you, Susie. Supposed to be a big romantic international glamour boy, Riley. Yeah, with the names of his girls tattooed on him. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're finally going to believe you, Flannery. Um, you wrote up Romano as being a foreigner, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, yes. Czechoslovakia and a Romanian... And here on this guy's chest, it says, Tell it to the U.S. Marines. So now, where are we, huh? It's an impersonation, all right. Impersonation by this guy, whoever he was, of a character written about in the newspaper. Even the wristwatch and the wallet are new. So he either bought it recently... Or it was planted on him. Well, naturally, I wouldn't have any reason for... Well, I mean, I only dreamed up Romano. I didn't... Well, what's the matter? Come on, Riley. We're going to dream up some answers. And stick around, Flannery. Maybe we'll all get our names in the paper. trying to think, Mr. Valentine. There's so many men aboard a ship, you know, and it's all so exciting, at least for a single girl like myself. Yeah, sure, Miss Nelson. Uh, is that it, Nelson? Uh, yeah, the, the Topeka Nelsons. Oh, I've, I've taught Latin there in the high school for I don't know how many. Yes, well, uh, will you please try to remember? You see, you were there almost at the right time. You must have seen... But I prowl all over the ship. I always do at sailing time. I, I travel a great deal, you know, all of us girls, and it's, it's so thrilling to see what kind of experiences you're going to have. Uh, like men, you mean? Well, really, Lieutenant. Well, that's what he's trying to ask you. Did you see a man in cabin 1A? Did you happen to oh, look I'm into... certainly not that forward. Well, did you see a man in the general area? Oh, excuse me, ma'am, but this guy who was in 1A was killed, and you're the only person who had even a remote chance of seeing or hearing I'm what... I'm trying, Lieutenant. I am trying. But I was late coming aboard myself, and, well, I remember you, Mr. Valentine. There was so much luggage in the corridor, we bumped into each other, didn't we? And, of course, the steward in that section... Uh, that's you, Carl. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, of course, sir. I wish I could. Well, there, there might have been something... If 
only think, I could... Think, will you, lady? Think, will you please... Oh, skip it, Riley, skip it. Huh? I understand, Miss Nelson. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. Uh, Claude, you want to repeat that story of yours? If you wish, sir. I was quite busy with the embarkation. From the beginning. Uh, I accepted $1,000, yes, sir. Mr. Flannery is an old customer of the line. I only wish to oblige him. It was a very small fraud merely to pretend there was somebody in what I thought to be an empty cabin. I never even looked in that cabin, sir. I locked the door, told anyone who came near that the gentleman inside did not wish to be disturbed. I was pretending that the fictitious Mr. Romano was in there, and I went about my duties. You locked the door without looking in? Yes, sir. If it was already locked by somebody leaving, you'd have noticed it. Perhaps. Or if it was locked from the inside by that guy who got killed or somebody else, you'd have noticed that too. What? And it would have been locked, of course, since the body hadn't been thrown overboard yet. So in either case, you would have noticed it, but you didn't. You said the door was unlocked. Really? The logic you're trying to use, Now sir, tell I... me, Buster, why is it the more nervous you get, the tighter you hold your hand against your son? Uh, no, 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 That's I... That's where you keep your precious thousand bucks? Or is that where you... Uh, get away from it. God, he's got a gun. Grab him. Stop it. Let's go. Here's your... Oh, no. No gun, Riley. Just his wallet, that's all. Give it back. Give it to me. Wow. One thousand? Jake Flannery said he gave you a thousand bucks, but... Holy smoke. Two, three, four, five, six. All right now, Claude, where'd you get the extra five? And don't well, waste any words this time. His name is Burnell, Sam Burnell. Go on. I met him. Never mind, that's not important. He's just a man, or was, I should say... Unsuccessful at a good many things, in and out of trouble, in and out of the Marines, in vaudeville with a knife throwing act, bicycle stunt rider on a tandem. You can check all this yourself. The only important thing was he had some money saved up and wanted to invest it. And you had something to sell? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes, sir. Well, it did seem ridiculous to me for Mr. Flannery to have built up that beautiful personality of Caleb Romano and then just want to throw it away. So you sold the vacancy to this Sam Bunnell? Well, the role did have inducements. Perhaps he wished to write a book or marry one of these wealthy creatures who were always chasing after Mr. Romano in the Sunday supplements. Perhaps he... Yeah, sure, I get it. It was a perfect confidence game for him. But I don't see yet why he got killed. Neither do I, sir. I know nothing about his murder. Uh, thank you, Claude. You're under arrest. But, Lieutenant... We'll call it material witness for the time... <laughs> It's that little school teacher. Somebody pushed her. You can't just fall over that rail. What's the matter with the lights? Get a light down there! Miss Nelson, huh? She did know something. She did remember She'd something. She'd be on the surface if she were alive, wouldn't she? Sail her down there now. I wonder where Flannery is. The tide's running offshore, Lieutenant. It's carrying her out. Well, get that launch going. Come on, come on. Oh, Sarah. George, maybe she never even guessed what it was she saw or heard that was important. Come on, come on. hurry up, Bellatine. Go on, go on. Don't wait for me. Uh, George! I got something else to do, Angel. So long. I'll see you later. <laughs> You heard me, Buster. Give me that boat. I'm going ashore. Well, welcome, lady. I've been on shore waiting for you. Mr. Valentine. Oh, you don't swim very well. Saw the lights. Couldn't tell direction. Yeah, the current's pretty strong, but you'll be all right. Now, give me a hand. Oh. Easy does it. That's it. Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah, not as young as you used to be, I guess. Oh. No, 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 don't try to talk. You must have had the daylight scared out of you tonight. Oh, here we are. Just sit here now and get your breath. It's pretty tough trying to swim like that after killing a man. What did you say? Yeah, you're the one who knocked me out too, I guess. I was headed for cabin 1A. I had to be stopped so the body could be gotten out of there, tossed overboard. You mustn't talk like that, young man. Cabin 1A. You called it a room. The old traveler, huh? Called a passageway a corridor, too. Several other things. Mr. Valentine. J.W., 29. Mamie H., 1930. Dates all ended in 32. None after, I noticed that. No. What happened then? Claude says Burnell tried vaudeville with a knife-throwing act. That takes a partner. Bicycle stunt rider for a while on a tandem takes a partner. <laughs> Little Latin teachers don't develop the nerve or muscles for a swim in water like that, Mrs. Burnell. No, no, I'm not Mrs. Burnell. You answer pretty quick, don't you? Sure, it must have been. 
And now that half-failure confidence game husband of yours latches onto the one thing that'd take him away from you forever. Old girlfriends and all. He was on his way to become the big international bachelor, pursued by the women of five continents. Oh, what a life. Oh, you, you can never understand. So you follow after the heel, get aboard ship, and then lose your temper, I guess. From then on, it's a three-ring madhouse. The tide's running offshore now, you know. Of course, you know, it almost killed you. But you wouldn't be here, would you? Unless you dived off that ship on purpose. Unless you were trying to run away. It was his gun. He had a gun. We struck him. Yeah, yeah, sure. I guess there's a lot on your side. Hey, hey down there. What's that? What's going on down there? Just take it easy. Let go of me. Who are they? What? Hey, what's the pitch? What's with the ship out there? We're running out of poker chips. You just come from that ship out there? Reporters, that's all, Mrs. Bennell. From the Outer Harbor Light Station. Every reporter in town still waiting. Hey, what is it? What's up? I tell you, we're getting pretty sick and tired of these publicity oh. gags. <laughs> the jury will let Mrs. Bennell off easy. I'm in tune with that kind of stuff, Miss Brooks. Symphony and sob, that's the angle. Husband was a rat, going to go away and be a playboy like he was before 32. Like, like I remember once, I ran up some stuff in a bomber. Stabbed his mother-in-law. The Mr. angle Flannery, was... Mr. I thought you were all through with publicity. You mean it's through with me, don't you? If you hadn't got smart in the first place, this guy but No, George. If the job of being Caleb Romano hadn't been around, that man would have left his wife some other way. With probably the same results. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you're right, Brooksy. So long, Flannery. Uh, no, wait a minute, Valentine. I've got an idea. I'm grateful, see? So I take and I build you up, see? I make people George Valentine conscious. You what? Well, what's the matter? You want to be a hermit or something? Get out of here. The only trouble is you need a little more human interest. Home and fireside. Soft lights and junk. Now, if you'll just take that dame draped around your neck there and... I said get... Hey, wait a minute. You mean... <laughs> well, it's an idea, isn't it? Mr. Flannery, it's a wonderful idea. Imagine how you'd feel if you found that your car's fuel tank had a slow leak and that you were losing one gallon of gasoline out of every ten. Expensive? You bet. But many motorists are losing that much gasoline simply because of worn and neglected spark plugs. At 35 miles an hour, your car's spark plugs have to fire about 5,000 times a minute, and in a temperature ranging from two to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. No wonder the porcelain sometimes cracks. No wonder the plugs need cleaning and resetting periodically. In fact, if your spark plugs have traveled more than 10,000 miles, chances are you'll be money ahead by getting new Atlas Champion spark plugs. They have the finest insulating material ever developed for spark plugs and efficiency beyond that of any other spark plug. So to prevent gasoline waste and for better engine performance, go on Atlas Champion spark plugs and have them inspected at regular intervals. Get this car saver service at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer as Lieutenant Riley. Eddie Marr was heard as Flannery. Lee Patrick as Mrs. Burnell. Eric Snowden as Claude and Bob Bruce as the reporter. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Thank you.